Okay, guys, uh, let me set this up for you guys. Okay, so, okay. Uh, this is primarily through our border towns. And border towns actually um, they have a lot of activities throughout the actual community, you know what I mean, which includes, which includes sports. And, uh, and to organizations, cartels, uh, and not just of, of, of running actual dope, just, you know, it could be laundry money, it could be, it could be people, it could be uh, uh, stolen goods, it could be any sort of actual racket. Uh, there's still, like I've said before, there's still the day of Sunday, which is a family day, and family day can consist of actually sporting events. And people take the time off to enjoy their actual, their hard labor throughout the week, right? And you're still with your family, you know, and you can still get some, you know, family time in between sporting events. And, um, and throughout, um, well, I can only speak on, on Tijuana and Mexicali and actual uh, Tecate. So uh, you have these, uh, what I can compare it to as uh, little leagues, but for adults and uh, and uh, uh, more of a, like, I guess if they still exist, cult, cult league, cult, and adult leagues throughout actual uh, the city. And East Municipal has its own, uh, its own league, its own representatives, uh, and there's plenty of participants, so ne you're never short of players, you know, you're never short of players, you're never short of talent. But, um, but if a coach, and I'm going to use the word coach, and the coach can be actually a very, very broad definition, could be the, the, the team manager, could be the team president, could be the team actual, uh, actual, uh, Money bags, you know, money bags, basically the, you know, for talent. And so, um, I don't know how much it is now, but back in, in you know, in the nineties, uh, it was traditional for parents to actually take their kids from the U.S. to play in Tijuana, Mexicali, and Tecate, so they can get a really uh, a more of a of a, uh, how do you say it, uh, not a watered down version of a sport event, you know what I mean? And, and if you, uh, wanted to take the time and dedication, you would cross the border and have your, your child attend, uh, participate, actually participate in a, uh, in the same age group as your child, but, uh, more of a competitive and more of a realistic sporting event. You know what I mean? And uh, when there's a little bit rougher, a little bit rougher, I should say, a little bit rougher talent, you know? And that's for, that's for multiple, multiple, um, that's, that could be for soccer, it could be for volleyball. Volleyball is very, very big, especially in Ensenada. Um, soccer, baseball, uh, you know, you name it, any kind of a sporting event that actually kids, uh, participate, you can actually find down there. And these are very, very good leagues and very, very well equipped and very, very, very well organized because there's money to be made, right? So um, as you get older, you know, um, you still uh, participate in these uh, actual leagues and you go on your own. And then uh, if you get to the right actual ballpark, uh, you could be actually uh, Monetize. You could actually get paid for the game, for your productivity throughout the actual uh, the games you play, right? So when one tends to actually uh, participate in these type of actual games as an adult, you know, you know what it's all about. You know where the money's coming from and you know who's funding it. And the more you win, the bigger the payroll is, you know? And, and I'm not talking about hundreds of dollars. I'm, and this is back then. You could get up to forty bucks a game, fifty bucks a game if you if you really uh, put in some work at that particular game. And if you hit a home run, if you win the game, whatever you pitch a good game, 
you get a little bit extra, you know, a little bit of extra gas money. But then again, you're having a good time. You're you're actually, you know, you're playing what you like, you know, baseball, soccer, different types of events. And these events are are very very organized to the point where um, you can make it to the state level and then you can make it to the national level. And that's where the big bucks come in. That's where the big deep pockets come in. And whoever, for example, whoever would win the actual of uh, the state um, championship, that actual coach, that actual manager will pick out any player that is available in that state. So this would be Baja California. This particular manager would hand pick throughout all the leagues in Baja California, a team to represent Baja California in the national title. And each year, a different uh, a different venue will be picked out, and all the states will participate in this actual tournament. Okay, so now, why do I mention this? Okay, so. These actual border teams can also handpick from the United States. For example, San Diego County, uh, Imperial Valley County. As long as you have some sort of proof of your last name being associated with uh, Mexico, either your parents were ra uh, uh, were born in Mexico, or if you have any kind of actual proof that um, that you are Mexican, you can actually participate in these tournaments, participate in these leagues, and along with that come the actual fans. You know, the fans that are actually. Uh, uh, willing to travel and when I say travel you travel for free okay uh the manager of this certain ball uh, let's call it a, a, a club ball club will actually fund the actual transportation with help of other entities you know and it's a really I'm telling you right now it's a it's a blast it's a really good time um uh you just gotta know how to behave if you're actually traveling with the team you just gotta know how to you have to know your role you know what i mean you have to know your your limit you can't get sloppy you can't be a sloppy drug because they will they'll take care of you you know what i mean not 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 in in a uh they won't kill you or anything like that but they they you will get um you will get handled and you will no longer be able to uh participate in events such as this because you who wants that? You know, who wants that negative publicity? You know, what I mean, if somebody's getting naked, you know, sloppy drunk and stuff like that, and and unfortunately, uh, there were parents that got, <laughs> got sloppy drunk like that, and I uh, yeah, moms had to be actually carried out of the ballpark because it was just such it's such a good time, and 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 you know, and alcohol is involved, and and uh, <laughs> it's a good time, so. When you're actually invited to go to these actual events, um, they will charter actual buses, tour buses, to travel. And let's just say, for example, um, uh, Tijuana is going up against uh, uh, a playoffs to make it to the actual uh, to the national title. So you would travel to uh, Mexicali, and that's Mexicali Agricultura or Mexicali Municipal. You know, there's such there's so many actual. Uh, ball clubs out there that um, you'd be surprised where you end up playing, you know? And um, and I uh, bring this up one time. Um, we actually traveled to uh, to our, uh, to the capital, which is Mexicali of Oaxaca, California. And, uh, and we were getting the better of them. We were actually getting the better of them on the field. And of course, uh, you travel with one or two buses full of, of team members full of, the, of equipment managers, full of all these. I mean, it's very, very, very organized and you're not gonna be short anything. There's plenty of equipment, there's plenty of uniforms, there's plenty of, of, of food. They supply the food, they supply the drinks, they supply uh, medical attention if somebody ever needs it, you know? It's very, very well organized and uh, very well funded. 
because there's a lot of money to be made on these actual games, you know. And uh, and honestly, uh, we were getting the best of them. Um, the crowd was, but the crowd was in it, and uh, it wasn't looking good for the home team, which was uh, Mexicali. Mexicali. Uh, I believe it was municipal. Yeah, I think it was municipal. And so um, we had the actual, we had the, how do you say, we had the actual, we had the motion, you know, we had the motion, um, the crowd was in it, uh, we had the points, we were up, we were up by, uh, by, by quite a bit. And um, a rival, the, was the rival team, uh, we want to say the rival organization, the rival cartel, sent over a representative to our side, the visitor side, and proceeded to actually produce a revolver along his waist. Click, click. And walked in front of the crowd This man did not have to say one word. This man did not have to give any kind of look. But he made sure we saw his revolver that he, uh, he was actually uh, carried in his waistband. And at that point, <laughs> at that point, we all looked at him. We acknowledged it. A few of us saluted him to make sure we got the point, and we were silenced for the remainder of the game. Now, uh, with soccer, I mean, you still have some minutes over. You think it's almost over, but then they, they get the whole mixture of, uh, of, of minutes that's still officially on the clock. Needless to say, 10 minutes, oh, no, was that three minutes? Three minutes before the actual game. Uh, finalized uh, all the equipment, all us fans, all the fans were seated in the bus, hunkered down, ready for the game to finish. As soon as the game finished, the actual team that was left on the actual field, because if you were not needed on the field, you were actually in the bus, proceeded to run to the bus as soon as that whistle was blown. And we took off and stuff was thrown at us, rocks, anything that they could get their hands on was thrown at the actual bus. The bus was, didn't even look back, didn't even contest it. We, we hauled ass out of there and we were gone. Just like that, all you can see is our, <laughs> our dust behind. And uh, traditionally, uh, we would stop by and it, and he set place to eat in um, Mexicali, and uh, we didn't do that. We uh, we ended up stopping somewhere in, in Tecate along the way and along the way back, and uh, we had something to eat there, and uh, we celebrated the actual victory there in Tecate, not in Mexicali. No way. All right, guys, uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe.